Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members. Subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slate, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Yes, Ms. Jose. Thank you. Mr. McMillian. Yes. Ms. Hen. Mr. Kuhn. Mr. Offerman. Yes. May I ask the last person that responded they were present to repeat uh, to state their name? Uh, th uh, this, is, this is Mr. Offerman. Thank you very much. Ms. Slade, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Dr. Williams. Dr. Boswell McComas. Mr. Dickerson. Present. Ms. Howie. Here. Ms. Lagerman. Ms. Lowry. Here. Dr. Scriven. Present. Dr. Wheatley Phillip. Dr. Zarchin. Ms. C Ms. Byers. Dr. Jones. Dr. Roberts. Ms. Burnock. Present. Mr. Corns. Present. Mr. Dixit. Present. Mr. Saris. Present. And uh, Ms. Slade, I think we need to note that Mr. McMillian is here as well. I don't know if you picked that up. No, I did not. Thank you. And Ms. Lagerman as well. Thank you. I've All responded, right. yes. I'm not. This is Rod McMillian. Uh, I didn't recognize your voice. I'm sorry. My apologies. Uh, no, I please accept my apology. Thank you. No, you're welcome. All right. Uh, Ms. Shea. Present. And Mr. Plate. Here. And if there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Daryl Williams, superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. As the new committee chair, I would like to take a quick moment to welcome our new committee members, Mr. John Offerman and Mr. Raskun, who's unfortunately will be joining us lately, uh, late. Also welcoming, uh, welcome to our returning committee members, Mr. Rod McMillian, vice chair, and Ms. Julie Hen, past chair, who is uh, also absent. And a quick moment to thank staff present for their support and professionalism, Mr. Saris, Mr. Dixit, uh, Dr. Williams, uh, Ms. Howie, Mr. Dickerson for all of the professionalism and help um, that you've exhibited during this difficult time. So uh, with that, 
Uh, Mr. Sarris, please state your name for the record and proceed with uh, presenting the first contract. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is George Sarris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services, and uh, we have 12 items this afternoon. The first one of which is JME 511-21, uh, secondary reading intervention. This is a new contract to provide a reading intervention program for students in grades six through 12 who have mild to moderate gaps in vocabulary, comprehension, and writing, but do not require intensive intervention for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $500,000. Is there any questions or discussions, committee members? I'll call each member's name for this purpose. Mr. Offerman? None. Uh, Mr. McMillian? No questions for me. There being no further questions, we will proceed to contract number two. Mr. Saris, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is CWA 104-21 hearing examiners. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide for hearing examiners for the Office of Law. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with six recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $375,000. Committee members, is there any discussion? And I'll call each member's name for this purpose. Mr. Offerman? None. Mr. McMillian? No questions. There being no further questions, we will proceed to contract number three. Mr. Saris, please proceed. Thank you. The next item, JBO 707-21, Radio Communications Master Contract 2018. This is a new cooperative contract to provide for the purchase and lease of school and vehicle Motorola radio systems components, tracking systems, dispatching systems, maintenance, accessories, and associated services for the Office of Network Support Services. Approval is requested for a two-year contract with 29 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $3.7 million. Committee members, any discussion? Mr. Saris, this is Mr. McMillian. I'm just curious. So we have 175 schools. Would all of our schools qualify to receive radios from this kind of contract? Yes, sir. This uh, includes all of our uh, safety radios uh, for schools, as well as enhanced uh, towers and licenses and transmission infrastructure to provide uh, the necessary and adequate coverage for the entire geographic area of the system. So if an elementary school principal needed a couple radios, would they have to pay for those out of their own local budgets or could they request it through the Office of Network Support Services? Uh, most of these funds are provided centrally unless Mr. Corns has anything he wishes to add. No, that's correct, Mr. Saris. Thank you. So it could be as simple as a principal reaching out and saying, I've either had four radios in the past and I need a couple more, or I, I haven't had any and I need, you know, five radios, you know, to help, you know, in the conduction of my business. That's as simple as it is. Yeah, network support services has been heavily involved in designing this plan. Uh, both from a transmission and, and a user capacity need. And my guess is that they have uh, an ideal uh, number that they wish to uh, provide for each elementary, middle, and high school, uh, but I don't have that detail. That's okay. But Thank you very much for your help. Mr. McMillian, this is uh, Jim Corns. At a, at a very high level, um, my staff has worked um, with several um, 
groups to come to, as Mr. Saros was saying, the ideal fit for the school based on population, based on the types of uh, employee that are available, so that there is a, a uh, let's just call it a basic package that would go to a building. Um, the ability to augment that is, um, is, is available but um, we have the idea of this is how many radios would be needed at each school based on size and layout. Th thank you very much. Is there any other, any other questions, committee members? There being no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mrs. Saris, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dixit, do you want to introduce this? Yes, good afternoon and welcome Ms. Joes to this good committee. Uh, the next contract is MBU 50718, which is for security system, access control, installations, repairs, parts, and preventive maintenance. Contract is used to repair existing system predominantly. Sometimes we upgrade it. We use those contract. The request here is to increase the amount by $3.7 million. While we still have money in the contract, we anticipate higher expenditure and primarily because of some of the security grants we have been able to get from state. Uh, this will be the second grant in the last couple of years. So approximately $2 million worth of grant work has been added to this contract. And we have <clears throat> increased focus on security and access control. Uh, our department works with the building security folks. Uh, so with that, we are requesting additional amount in this contract. Is there any discussion? And I'll call each member's name for this purpose. Mr. Offerman? None. Um, Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. All right, I have a quick question, Mr. Sarah. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Dixit. Um, this modification, uh, how is that spread over how many years, you said? $3.7 million? This contract expires in 2022. OK, and uh, so we still have time and we still have money in the contract, but we know in advance that the more money is going to be needed. And this is for across the entire system or is that select schools or uh, facilities? This is for all schools and offices. OK, thank you. There being no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Saris, please proceed with okay. presenting. Thank you. The next one, JME 515-21, is for cut sheet paper. This is a new cooperative contract for the purchase of letter and legal size paper for schools and offices. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1.4 million. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mr. Jones, I have a question for Mr. Saris. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just surprised there's only one bidder on a contract like this. Um, well, this is a, a cooperative bid. Uh, it was conducted for us by Montgomery County Schools. And um, I don't know that we have from them the information on the total number of bidders. Uh, but I know that in the past we've cooperated with Anne Arundel County. Uh, so this is the first time uh, that we are working with the Montgomery County contract, but I will uh, do some research. My guess is that there were, uh, there were multiple bidders as we typically have, um, but I will do that research after the meeting. Mr. George, I was just curious. Thank you very much for your help. Sure. If committee members don't have a question, I have a quick question, Mr. Saris. For this yes. contract, since it's uh, we have used previously legal 
paper and cut sheet paper. What happened to the previous contract? Did that expire or? Yes, the contract will expire this month. Um, we have in the past attempted to get multi-year contracts, but the pricing of paper is is volatile enough that nobody wants to provide more than one year of uh, of pricing. So we have typically renewed this uh, every year about this time. OK, thank you. Uh, there being no further questions, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit or Mr. Saris, please proceed. So the next contract, ASI 821, is for science casework replacement at Franklin Middle School. A little bit, little bit of background about it. This is as a result of a grant that we have been able to receive, courtesy Speaker Jones of Maryland State, and the grant was in the amount of $500,000. This particular project is for 293,771, including contingency, and it will take care of the casework, plus five ad alternates that we were able to include. All of the ad alternates are accepted. Uh, they include installation of new rubber stair treads, uh, a installed perimeter room bookshelf in seven science classrooms. Replace all existing floor tiles uh, and remove and replace eyewash stations in seven science classroom and goggle cabinets in seven science room. So all of the work, these science labs will be completely refurbished and modernized because of this contract. Is there any discussion, Mr. Offerman? No, not at this time. Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. There being no further questions, we will proceed to contract number seven. Mr. Saris or Mr. Dixit, please proceed. So the next contract is GDA 30521 for a solar power purchase agreement. Since the contract is in large amount and for a long term, and it is our first foray into solar power. With your approval, I'd like to provide a little bit of background uh, so that everybody has a better understanding of that. Solar power is a renewal source of energy, and there is large amount of interest in our communities in our student body for solar power. It is also part of our sustainability effort and a normal, a very common mode for getting solar power these days is through purchase power agreement and under which a developer installs, owns and maintains equipment and sends electricity back to us. And if any of the power is not used by that facility, it is pumped back into the grid and can be used by any other facility. Uh, the installation of solar powers could be on site, off site, ground mount, or canopy mount. The one that we are, or the rooftop mount. The one that we are proposing under this is a canopy, canopy mount in our bus and ground shop facilities. This will allow us to get power at a competitive price in a sustainable manner and also protect our vehicles in these shops. So this is for the first time that we have been able to get power at a competitive price and is still through a sustainability source. What it entails is providing a guarantee to the developer to purchase power for 20 years and let them maintain uh, the equipment, uh, install and maintain that equipment. The power is fortunately cheaper than the other source that we get from from the BGA and other suppliers. So it is cost effective, it is sustainable, and the purchase power agreement is being reviewed by law office and all of the design and drawings will be reviewed by our engineering office. So with that, I'm open for any questions. Is there any I have a question. Go I have ahead. A question for Mr. Pete. 
Go ahead. Mr. Pete, I read an article recently that talked about this technology is changing so quickly that the issue of, you know, recycling the equipment after a certain period of time is, is a major issue. And, and your conversation with these vendors or this vendor, have you talked at all about who's responsible for the recycling piece at the end of the contract? It is my understanding that the contractor will be responsible for taking the equipment back or leasing it, but that'll be reviewed by our law office. And they, so they own the equipment, they maintain it, and they take care of it once it is done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Offerman, do you have any questions? No, I don't. I have a quick question, Mr. Dixit. Um, this is, is there any state re required mandate or policy that's um, pushing for this, uh, you know, getting energy sources from renewable uh, energy sources? Is that uh, the reason why we are pursuing this contract? It, it is a pretty large contract, so. That that's a good. That's really a good question. So there are two things in this in, in responding to that. There is a legislation that was passed in April 2019 that requires that 50% of the electricity has to be purchased through renewable sources by 2030. But as you know, this is change legislation. They keep changing, but it is good for us to start working on it. Also, as part of the federal regulation, there's different amount of credit allowed to a developer and contractors at different time. Right now, um, they have a good tax credit environment, so they are able to offer an attractive price for us. Now, this can change, but we'll still be guided by the terms at this time. So, while it is 50% and this is a small contract, this is this will take care of about 4% of our total portfolio. So this is the baby step to meet our goal for in the next 10 years. OK, and um, I'm sure Mr. Kuhn will have some yeah, questions. Okay. He actually is um, very uh, interested in our sustainable energy sources. So I have no questions and we can move on to the next contract. Thank you, Madam Chair. The next item is mine, LKO 400-20, Human Resource and Financial Management System Enterprise Software. This is a contract modification to provide for the continued use of Human Resource and Financial Management System Enterprise Software. Approval is requested to increase the contract spending authority by $525,000 bringing total contract spending authority to $12,575,000 with one awarded vendor approved by the board on uh, in August 2019 and amended twice in September of 2020 and December of 2020. Uh, this is um, the contract that the board uh, approved the $1.5 million amendment to in December, which uh, provided for the move of our system to a cloud-based uh, environment that was provided by our software vendor. And that uh, fixed price contract of $1.49 million also included about 750 consulting hours and that was just an initial estimate uh, based on the recovery. Uh, to this point we've used 875 hours so in excess of that original estimate and uh, having uh, worked on this project now for two months uh, we have a much better idea of how long the project will take and and an estimate an up revised estimate for the number of consulting hours associated with that. So um, we believe that over the next year, a total of uh, 3,500 hours could be required 
And so we're asking for uh, the additional spending authority of $525,000 that will continue the project uh, that we are currently uh, undertaken, which uh, will go well beyond uh, simply uh, recovering uh, our payroll and financial data, but also reconstructing interfaces and uh, reconstructing reports, all of which were lost as a part of the ransomware attack. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Offerman, Mr. No questions from me, Rod McMillian. None. All right, thank you. I have a quick question, Mr. Saris. Yeah. Um, this original contract was approved by the board in August of 2019, and you're adding additional funding to it is it just based on the ransomware? Is that why? Because it is a pretty large contract um, to begin with. Budget. Correct. Yeah, the, the project, uh, the contract that was approved in 2019 was a five-year contract. Uh, the original contract that we had uh, was about 15 years old, and it was a cooperative contract with Baltimore County government. So at that point in 2019, Baltimore County uh, made it clear that they did not plan to maintain a relationship with this vendor. And they suggested uh, that if we wished to do so, we needed to uh, provide our own contract, that they were moving on to a different provider. So at that time, we provided the board with a five-year extension and an estimate of costs over the five-year period um, and then uh, since then um, we uh, amended the contract most recently um, by the 1.5 million dollar figure for response to the ransomware and the move to the cloud and this was not included in the original contract moving to the cloud based services. Correct. That was always an option, but uh, the amount of money that the county provided us for the upgrade um, back in uh, 2019 was really sort of a bare bones budget. So um, we had contemplated perhaps doing that within this five-year period and obviously our uh, circumstances changed and we needed to make that move immediately. Gotcha. Since this was a cooperative contract, it wasn't competitively bid out, correct? Um, back in 2004, I think that is correct. And that would have been a county uh, process, county government. Thank you, Mr. Saras. There being well, no further questions, we will proceed to the cybersecurity contracts. Um, I will ask staff to present the following contracts. Contract 9, MWE uh, 822-21, cyber cryptocurrency and ransomware negotiation services. Uh, number 10, MWE 823-21, forensic investigation and triage services. Contract 11, MWE 824-21, Ransomware Response Data Recovery Consulting Services. Number 12, MWE 826-21, Ransomware Response Public Relations Consulting Services. The board has asked that the contracts for all of its cybersecurity vendors be taken through the normal building and contract process so that the public is aware of the services provided to the board during the ransomware attack. There are four contracts presented for approval and one that is presented for informational purposes. The legal services contract for McDonald Hopkins LLC, a law firm with expertise in cybersecurity, is provided for informational purposes only. Based upon recent advice from the County Attorney's Office under Section 4104B of the Education Article, the school board may retain counsel to represent it only for legal matters 
involving disputes with the Baltimore County government. Under 4104B, the school board does not have authority to approve contracts for legal services involving outside counsel. This, of course, concerns legal contracts with outside counsel to handle cybersecurity matters. As such, this contract with McDonald Hopkins LLC to provide legal counsel for the board, which is currently before the board, must have authorization from the county attorney. The contract for McDonnell Hopkins to provide legal services for the board has been approved by the Baltimore County Attorney. Mr. Saris, please proceed with presenting these four contracts. You're on mute, George. You're on mute, sir. Thank you, Dr. Scriven. Uh, MWE 822-21. Cyber Cryptocurrency and Ransomware Negotiation Services. Uh, this is a new contract for those services for one year uh, and not to exceed $11,500. The um, next item. MWE 823-21 Forensic Investigation and Triage Services. This is a new contract for those services for a one-year, 10-month period uh, with one recommended bidder and spending authority not to exceed $860,000. The um, next contract, MWE 824-21 Ransomware Response Data Recovery Consulting Services. This is a new contract for those services for an 11 month period and contract spending authority of $310,000. And lastly, MWE 826-21 Ransomware Response Public Relations Consultation Services. And this is an 11 month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $50,000. And I believe that's the last item is informational only. Ms. Jones, I have a question, Rod McMillian. Is any, can somebody hear me? Oh, go ahead, Mr. McMillan. Sorry, I was on mute. Go ahead. That's OK. Uh, George, on the MWE 822-21, new contract for cyber cryptocurrency and ransomware negotiation services. <laughs> Just reading that, it's, did we somehow negotiate with the, with the ransomware people? Um, would the general counsel care to respond or would you like me to do so? Sure, Mr. McMillian, uh, that is a discussion we can have in closed session today. Okay, and then when I total up all these contracts, it comes up to somewhere, you know, over a million dollars. A million eleven hundred or something, or, or a million. It's about one point three. Yes. Okay. Now it's it's somewhere. It talks about the insurance. Where only uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. It talks about uh, are considered to be part of a single claim for which BCPS is responsible for only the aggregate deductible amount of five thousand dollars. So does that does that mean that? You know, this 1.3 is going to be paid for by insurance, most likely, and we're only responsible for $5,000? Yes, sir. That is most likely the situation. And it, it, now I'm going to simplify that. If I have an accident, usually I wait for in my car or motorcycle, I wait for the insurance to pay, pay the amount that they cover, and then I pay the rest. Is that this situation, or do we have to put out that 13? that 1.3 out in front. 
So uh, the way we expect this to work is that uh, the the claims will be filed and that our uh, insurance pool agent, uh, Maryland Association of Boards of Education, uh, will uh, process the payments and then <coughs> bill us back for that $5,000 deductible, which would be our net uh, cash outlay for all the claims related to the attack. That's outstanding if it all works out that way. Thank you very much for your help. You're welcome, sir. Ms. Jones, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> All right, is there any uh, other discussion committee members? Hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through 12 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Offerman. Do I have a second? Yes, I second it, Rod McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian, thank you, Mr. Offerman. The question is on the recommended approval of contracts 1 through 12 for board action. Those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Slate, please call the roll. Ms. Jose? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Hen? Mr. Kuhn? Mr. Offerman? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Slade. There being uh, three in the affirmative and two uh, absentee votes, the motion passes. Contracts 1 through 12 will be moved forward to the board. Is there any other further business? No, thank you. Because there is no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, staff, and thank you, committee members. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. you very much. Thank you.